Konnichiwa. Good afternoon. My name is Clarence Palmer. I am a Hammond B3 jazz organist and throughout the years there's one question that has been asked of me over and over and over and that is how long have I been playing? How old was I when I started? And why did I choose the Hammond B3 to be my instrument? Well if you're a Facebook or YouTube subscriber, you can uh, search for Clarence M. Palmer and check out a few of the things that I've done over these many years. But to answer that question, I need to tell you a little bit about my childhood history and a little bit of the beginning and how I came to play this instrument. It was a song that did it. Now, when I was a kid, I was raised with five brothers and two sisters, and we used to sit around television and watch shows like Dinah Shore, Andy Williams, Perry Como, The Lone Ranger, and such. And at that time, I didn't know I was being introduced to the American Songbook and a taste of cla classical music at the same time. You might want the classical music, or well, classical music because the Long Ranger, the theme of the Long Ranger was William Tell Overture. And uh, this was written by Giochino Rossini. You might know a lot more of his work than I do. But uh, listening to this wonderful music during that time, you know, program me to try to search for good music wherever I went. It came to be that I joined the United States Air Force and traveled through the South in the service, stationed in uh, Georgia for a while, and eventually got assigned to a base, Misawa Air Base in Japan. And when I became aware that I was going to go to Japan, of course I read as much as I could about the country and its people. So when I got there, I was assigned a, a sponsor. This is another airman that facilitates you maneuvering around the base and in the small town that was there, Masawa, Japan. And this was like in the early 60s. And it came a time when we went to town, which was right outside the main gate. And as we traveled through the gate and walked, it couldn't have been uh, even a hundred yards. I heard this sound down this particular alley, which was known at AP Alley, as AP Alley. And it was nothing but country and western music. And my uh, sponsor, who became my friend, told me that is where all the white airmen hang out predominantly. So that was something that didn't interest me too much here anyway because you know, I'd had my share of country and western uh, music being from West Virginia. So as we walked a little more you could hear the sounds of the Japanese music and eventually we walked down a railroad track into the black section of town and he took me to this bar called the Jazz Corner and when we walked in I heard the most beautiful music I had ever heard in my life and the song that was playing was called The Sermon by the late great Mr. Jimmy Smith. Jimmy Smith is still cons uh, considered the best jazz organist that ever lived. Yeah. I hope I can get to be that way one of these days. Anyway, the music was so great, it gave me such a great spirit. It soothed my soul. It just went down into the depths of my body and my soul. It gave me a lot of uh, feeling of security, safeness, and confidence and confident that I could stay the rest of this tour in Japan that I had been a little anxious about. 
and it wouldn't be so bad and it turned out to be fabulous you know uh, the jazz uh, at this place at this little bar was great it soothed me and then I began to seek out other jazz music in the town in different towns which was absolutely wonderful it was so amazing listening to this song at that bar that night because in in America a song would last two and a half minutes that's all the recordings would be but this song played for 29 plus minutes and you can still hear versions of it today that might be even be 32 minutes you know it's uh, it's in the credit that's why they call it the sermon I guess and it is a sermon you can put your own words and, and tell your own story as you're listening to it but I'm sure you will you know I hope you will get a hold of this uh, album and listen to this this instrument is so incredible that people just come and stand by it and touch it sitting behind this organ and playing it reminds me uh, of you being in a jumbo jet sitting behind the, the wheel in the jumbo jet in the cockpit. It has that much awesomeness and power right at your fingertips. You can uh, find people playing that organ on YouTube and, and Facebook. I guess some people like Dr. Lana Smith and Joy D. Francesco, they're uh, traveling organist right now and uh, they're doing a very good job keeping the instrument in the face of the people uh, I want to encourage you to try to do this you can find some of these organs in black churches uh, you can maybe find them in some old piano uh, places where people have turned them in there there are probably a lot of p3s and a lot of homes that they have no idea what they are. The parents probably left it to the children or whatever that sounds, Kali. Not whatever. But even, you know, they're, they're around because they made them and uh, quite a bit of them. They were so popular in the 60s and the 70s, you know, and they can still have them. Uh, but do yourself a favor. Find a place where this organ is being played and go and check it out. And I assure you, you will enjoy it. Konnichiwa, good afternoon, and thank you so much for having a listen to this. Clarence M. Palmer. Bye-bye.